in a, a series um, called No More Excuses. Say no more excuses. Look at somebody and tell them no more excuses. Amen. And we looked last week at the first excuse that God dealt with in the life of Moses. Moses said, well, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? You know, who am I? If you weren't here, get that uh, when that series does come out. Powerful, powerful message. And uh, today I want to deal with the, the scripture. Go ahead with me to the book of Exodus. We're staying in the book of Exodus. And go with me to first, uh, the, the, rather the third chapter. That's where we were last week. We're going to continue because the objections are there. All right. And just pick up with me in the middle of verse 12. Exodus chapter 3, and we're going to pick up in the middle of verse 12. Say amen if you have it. All right. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. And we dealt with that last week. And Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Moses being in awe of the presence of God and realizing that he was called to something great. Now he comes to the first uh, objection that we dealt with last week and then this second one now found here in verse 13. Look at it with me one more time. And Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? Hallelujah. I want you to look at your neighbor and just ask him, then what? God, we thank you for your word. We thank you the blessing is on your word. And now, as we move into the revelation of your word, give us understanding, grace, and mercy. By your spirit, cause it to change us, we pray in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen and amen. All right. This is Moses' second expression of reluctance now. And it's in the form of a question. He always, his questions are always pointed toward God. He's saying, what about this and what about that? Last week, he says, who am I? And today, we look and we find out that Moses asks another question in addition to the first. He goes, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. That's what I'm supposed to tell them. What is his name? But then he says, then what shall I tell them when they ask me what your name is? What then? What do I tell them? What am I supposed to say? What then am I supposed to tell them? What am I supposed to reveal to them? What am I supposed to declare to them about your name? Now, he already anticipates a question that is going to come from the Israelites when he goes back to them. And the issue here is that this question that he asks... What then, look at it one more time, what then shall I tell them? Everybody say, what then? So the question then is not only for the people's benefit, because he said, what then shall I tell them? But the issue here is that it's his own question too. What is your name? I I, I know that i got to have an answer for them, because they're going to ask me. They're going to demand to know, well, what's, your, what's his name? If the God that you say sent you sent you, then tell us his name. But I want to know too. I want to have a revelation too. I want to have an understanding of your name as well. So there's a dual reason why he asks the question, what then shall I tell them? When he says, what then shall I tell them? He's saying, what name shall I use, watch this, that will distinguish you from false gods? They have been inundated and surrounded and put upon by all of the pagan gods of Egypt. 
Some of them have even forgot your name. Some of them have even missed the mark in trying to identify who you are and who to worship. They've been broke, busted, and disenfranchised in a land that is not their own. And they need to know your name because there's too many gods to call on now. Wherever they go, they hear people calling on Isis and Orisis and Ra and Ankh and all of the other gods of Egypt. They hear all kinds of names being touted about as the name on who to call. But I got to give them a name that distinguishes you from all of those other gods. What then shall I tell them? Not only that, not only does he need a name that will distinguish them, distinguish God from the other gods, the false gods, but also he's saying this, what name shall I use that your people, watch this, can be encouraged to expect deliverance from you? I got to give them a revelation of a name huh, that if they call on that name, you'll hear and you'll answer. If they call on that name, you'll respond. If they call on that name, you'll hear from heaven and you will see about them and you will have compassion on them and you'll reach down your, and extend that hand of power and mercy and might and strength and pull your people up out of their slavery and out from under the I got to have a name to give them that if they call on that name you'll hear it I got to give them an answer because they're going to ask me I need to have a name that guarantees a response you know you can call Buddha but Buddha can't hear you you can call Krishna, but Krishna can't hear you. You can call La Virgen de Guadalupe. She cannot hear you. You call on St. John, St. Paul, St. Joseph, and St. Mark, and St. Bubba. They can't hear you. There's only one who can hear you. There's only one who can answer you. There's only one who can save you. There's only one who can heal you. There's only one who can deliver you. He is God Almighty. That's the name you call on. That's the one that you call on. And when you do, he will hear and answer you. Moses is seeking something when he asks the question, then what shall I tell them? You know what he's really seeking? He's seeking God's revelation of himself. I want to know you. Reveal yourself to me. Because I can't have a revelation for them if I don't give a re get a revelation for myself. See, you got to have your own testimony of what God has done for you. It's nice to depend on somebody else's story. And well, I heard about so-and-so who got saved. And I heard about so-and-so who got delivered. And I heard about that lady or that man who got rescued when they were in trouble. But it's good when you have your own testimony and you can lift your own hand as an eyewitness to your own experience and say, I remember the night God saved me. I remember the day God delivered me. I remember the moment that I was sick and dying dying and God healed my body you need to have a personal revelation if God's deliverance then was going to be fully appreciated and assured to the worshiper then he who would be worshipped on the mountain, as we found out last week, must also be known. Paul said, you worship a God, talking to the unbelievers, talking to the pagans. He said, you worship the unknown God because you don't know him. But let me tell you who he is. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
He's the God of the 12 tribes. He's the God of Moses. He's the God of Isaiah. He's the God of Daniel. He's the God of Obadiah. He's the God of Micah. He's the God of Nahum. He's the God of Habakkuk. He's the God who is eternal and there is no error and there is no fault in him. He is altogether holy, perfect, righteous, and glorious. And he comes in the manifestation of the person of Christ. Christ Jesus. You need to know God before you can worship him. A lot of times we want people to worship God, but they can't because they don't know him. See, you can praise God for what he does, and that's what we do. But you can't worship God unless you know who he is. I need to know you. I need to have a revelation of who you are. Moses is crying out for a revelation in his question, then what? Moses at this point in his life, in his journey, in his calling, watch this. He's crossing the line from reasonable inquiry to revelation. A lot of people only want to know this much about God. They just want to have a reasonable inquiry. Well, where did it come from and who's Jesus and give me a few more Bible facts and I'll be okay. But there's some people who want to have a revelation. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but there are some people who go to church who want to have a revelation. There are some people who gather among others for a revelation. Some people just come for reasonable inquiry and all they want is that and they get that and they say, I'm cool, I'm fine, don't make me come out of my comfort zone, don't push me out of my box, I don't need to know anything any more than what I know right now, but there are some folk who want a revelation of his power, a revelation of his person, a revelation of his nature and his glory. Some people want a revelation of the real and the true God. Is there anybody in this room that I might be talking to who came this morning for a revelation of God? Tell somebody you got to leave reasonable inquiry and move to revelation. And so the question then as he crosses the line is found in the words, then what shall I tell them? Moses' request is for much more than a divine title. You see, he'd already been given a divine title when God appeared to him. Take off your sandals. You're on holy ground. I'm calling you to this. Now let me tell you who I am. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm the God of your fathers. That's a title. He said, I want more than a title. I need to know your name. I need to have a revelation of your identity. My request is much more than just a divine title. I need a personal name because a personal name was not merely a form of address, watch this, but it was a description of character and nature. If I tell you who I am by virtue of my personal name, it tells me something, uh, tells you something about me. If I say I'm Pastor D'Angelo, Dr. D'Angelo, or like they call me in, in, in Africa, Bishop. Or in Argentina, they call me Apostle, Apostol. All these different titles, those are titles that don't tell you nothing about me. Just tells you what I do. Amen. In Atlanta, Georgia, when I go preach at that church over there, that great church, World Harvest Church, the pastor gets up and he introduces me every time and he says, and now all the way from San Francisco, California, the San Francisco treat. <laughs> Amen. And I, the last time I was there, I got up and I made them sing rice a -roni song. Amen. <laughs> they did it. I didn't don't think they knew it in Georgia. But I'm all, all I'm telling you then is, is, is about my function in the kingdom of God. 
I do this, I'm identified by this, this is how people see it, this is how people recognize that particular anointing or that title or that office or that calling that I walk in, but it doesn't tell you who I am. Now, if I tell you my name and if I tell you where it came from and if I tell you who gave it to me, ah, now you're getting a sense of my background. Now you get a sense of my heritage. And now you get, my mom named me Daniel because she liked it because it was a Bible name and it meant judge. I don't know which, the, maybe she thought I was going to be a judge. I don't know, you know, but no, she knew I was called to preach. She liked that name. She liked the story of Daniel. And so she gave me that name. So I just, by me telling you that, that, that my name came from my mother's desire to see me walk in the office of a prophet. That starts to tell you something about me and my background. Tells you the woman I came from. Tells you my heritage. Tells you that she was a, a, a praying woman. That she was a devoted woman. That she was a woman who loved God more than anything or anyone on the face of the earth. And she was not trying to stay here. She was trying to go to glory. So if I tell you my name, and now we go into the, 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 the heritage of my last name, and that's D'Angelo, and it means of the angels. I was never of the angels, amen. I, I snatched that name, amen. But it tells you that's an Italian name. It starts to tell you about my, my heritage. It tells you about my makeup, my, my, my ethnicity. Names reveal a lot. They're not just a form of address, not just calling me out of my name, but it's an actual revelation of description of character and nature. So if I tell you that, then you get a, a better understanding, rather, of who I am and where I came from. God says to Moses, all right, you want to know my name. You're not interested necessarily anymore in a title. You want my personal name. You want more than a form of address. You want a description of my character and my nature. Not only for them, but for yourself. And so God then identifies and explains his divine personage. How does he do it? Look it. Then what shall I tell them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. Would you say that with me? I am who I am. God's statement then, Eye asher eye, I am who I am, is the revelation of his nature and his character and his personage. Because what he's really saying is, I am not just the God of Abraham and the time of Isaac and the season of Jacob and of those generations, but I'm the God who preceded them. I'm the God who is eternal. I am the God who is from eternity past to eternity present and eternity future. Therefore, I am who I am. I am who I was and I am who I ever shall be. I do not change. I am absolutely immutable. I cannot change. I'm not affected by time. I'm not affected by age. I'm not affected by your situation or anybody else's. No one can dictate to me. I am the eternal God. I am eternal. I'm immortal. I'm unchangeable. I am who I am. And I am who I am based on the fact that what I do is a revelation of who I am. Because you can't have an understanding of who I am unless you understand what I do. But you must understand that what I do is a reflection of who I am. I'm holy so I create holiness. I'm a healer so I create healing. And I heal. I'm a deliverer so I deliver. I'm a savior, so I save. I'm a redeemer, so I redeem. I'm the one who breaks bondages and I set people free, so I come to set you free. And I'm the one who will set my people free. I am who I am. When God says I am who I am, it's an answer to Moses' fear of not go knowing God well enough. Because if he goes to the people 
And he said, I'm here because the, watch this, because the God of your fathers, hmm. he doesn't even understand yet that God is the God of his fathers. The God of your fathers has sent me to you. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses is still dealing with an identity crisis. I'm an Egyptian, but I'm not an Egyptian anymore. But I've been living in Midian for 40 years, so therefore I must be a Midianite now. But no, I can't be a Midianite. Still, they worship all kinds of crazy gods. I can't go and do that. I'd left that behind. and I don't know who I am anymore. And now I'm faced with this one who says, I am that I am. And i got to carry that message all the way back to Egypt. And I've got to confront not only Pharaoh, but i got to confront the Israelites. I got to know you better than I know you right now. I got to have more than a title. I got to have more than identification. I got to have more than a social security card. I got to see more than your driver's license. I need to know you. I need to have a revelation of who you are. I've got to have something that assuages and eliminates all of my fears and all of my preoccupations and the stress and the nervousness I'm going through right now. I got to have something that gives me a sense of peace and relief and total security. I need to know your name. Moses' question then is met by God's promise to reveal his timeless reality as the God of the past and the present and the future. Whenever you get hungry enough to know who God really is. Oh, God, can I take my time this morning? I, I know you want to hurry me through because you're used to me doing 27 and a half minutes nowadays. But back in the day, I used to preach an hour and a half. You can't, listen, you can't rush through a revelatory message. You have to take your time with a prophetic message. If I'm just giving you ABCs of Christian life and tell you how to walk it out, I can do that in 29 minutes. But don't expect me to do it when i got to reveal to you the nature and the character and the revelation of God through a rainbow word that comes through a divine manifestation of his glory and his power as it manifests in my own spirit and causes me to go places where I've never been before. Anybody want to go? I said, anybody want to go? Anybody want to go? You want to leave that reasonable inquiry and go to the place of revelation? Anybody want to go there with me? I'm already there. Moses said, no, I, I, I have to have a revelation of your timeless reality. It's the God of the past the God of the present, and the God of the future. When you move into that dimension of inquiry, when you move into that place of a desire to know God, who he really is, he will assure you and reveal to you that he is more than the God of your moment. He is more than the God of your present season. He is the God who saw you before you got here. He is the God who already ordered your steps. He's the God who already dictated and decreed the realities of your future. He's the God who has already orchestrated every event that you will go through should you listen to the call of his voice and the demonstration of his divine instruction. He's the God who will come and appear to you and say, don't you worry about what you're in right now because I've already preceded you and I've already gone ahead of you. I already am there and I've already been there I am that I am and you're just in your right now moment you're in a I'm right here and God said I've been there I'm here and I'm there as well don't you worry about a thing but if you never inquire if you never get hungry if you never get thirsty you'll only know him within the reasonable reality of your present moment that's why a lot of people never grow That's why a lot of people never expand their understanding. 
And God's calling every person in this room to a place of revelation. You see, revelation is for whosoever will. Call on me, I'll tell you. Come after me. Seek me with all of your heart. Come diligently after me. And I will reveal myself to you. Call unto me and I'll show you great and mighty things, unsearchable things that you know not of. I will. All you can see is this, but if you call on me with a hunger and a thirst to know who I really am, I'll take you behind the screen. Oh, God. I'll take you behind the holy of holies. I'll take you behind the veil. I'll take you into a place, a secret place that nobody really gets into because no, most people don't even want to go there. They even just, well, I heard about it, but I'm not interested. I'm too busy doing this. And God's saying, but it's for whosoever will. I'm not a respecter of person. If you want to come behind the screen, come on. If you want to get inside the secret place, come on. If you want to have a revelation of who I am, greater than what you ever understood in your life or what you dreamed possible, then come on with me. I will take you behind the veil. I feel... The Holy Ghost in this room. I feel the tug of the Spirit on people's lives saying, Come apart with me, my beloved. Come with me to a place of rest. Come with me to a place of revelation. Come with me to a place of understanding. Get alone with me. I've had amazing times in the presence of God with other believers. I've been in some of the greatest services when God used prophets. And I could name them all day, Dr. Rodney Howard Brown, Dr. Tim Bagwell, Dr. Juanita Bynum. I, the list goes on and on and on and on from the time I was 12 years old, even until this present day. And those are wonderful, and they, keep, they seek and they, 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 they continue to confirm the prophetic destiny on my life. And I'm grateful for every one of them. But nothing compares to being alone with him. When there's nobody else around. When I can cry my tears. When I can just get ugly in front of him. And he doesn't care. When I just bear my soul and tell him things that he already knows but I need to tell them. To him, I can't tell them to you. It's none of your business. But I can tell him. And I say, I want to know you more. I want to know you like you know me. The night I got saved, I will never forget it. Because the prophetic voice through the messenger of the prophet said this. I've always longed for you to know me. Like I know you. And tonight you have been made ready. And God issued a challenge to me. And he said, if you'll seek my face every day, I'll give you revelation knowledge. Not only of my word, but myself as the author. I believe that there are some people in this room this morning who are looking for a revelation of God. And as God was given, God gave to Moses, rather, a name that spoke not only who he was, but who he is. 
He said, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of your fathers. But watch this. Let me tell you who I am. I am that I am. The significance of the name that God gave to Moses constituted this. It was God's promise to be with him. I'm with you right now on the mountain. I'll be with you when you go down the mountain. I'll be with you when you have to explain to your family why you're leaving. I'll be with you on your journey back to Egypt. I'll be with you when you stand in the court of Pharaoh and you tell him, God said, let my people go. I'll be with you when you stand in front of the Israelites and they question your knowledge and your identity and your revelation of who I am. When they ask you for an I will be with you, Moses, and I will be with you when I cause my mighty plagues to fall upon Egypt and Egypt finally has to let you go. And I'll be with you when you move out of Egypt and you walk out with riches of Egypt in your hand because I said that I would make you prosperous and I will be with you with you when you make your way to the impasse when you think that there's no help and there's no hope and there's no deliverance because in front of you is the Red Sea and behind you is the Egyptian army it's then that I will still be with you tell them I am is with you the I am is with you and I'll part the Red Sea and I'll take you into the promised land I will be with I am is with you God told Moses that his name is I am who I am. And that he must tell anyone who asks him who sent you, tell them I am sent me. Who sent you, I am. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? You are. No, no, no. I am sent me. The great I am sent me. The awesome I am sent me. The holy I am sent me. That's who sent me. But you have to know the I am before you can say he sent you. Oh, you can say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Rabbis stand up in, in synagogues every Saturday and they say, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Baruch Hashem Adonai. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But it's only somebody in whom the I am lives and has a revelation of the nature and the person and the personage of the I am who can say, the I am has sent me. God told Moses, tell them, my name is I am who I am. And whoever then beyond that asks you who sent you, tell them I am has sent me. And so God answers Moses' question. When he says, then what? I'll tell him this, and I'll tell him that. But then what about your name? Then what? Tell them, I am. Who I am is who I am. And then tell them, I am has sent you. When he answered Moses' question, then what? He was giving him living proof. I am is the I am who is speaking to you right now. Here's your proof, Moses. Here's your evidence, Moses. Here's your revelation of my character and my nature. I am. I am 
Do I need to know anything more than that? I am. When God gave him that name, he was not only giving him living proof, it was not just for the satisfaction of a people to whom he was to be sent, but it was for Moses' own assurance that this God who spoke to him was the supreme, self-existent, self-sufficient, immutable, faithful, immortal, and eternal God who was now speaking to him. This morning, I'm issuing a challenge to you. We dealt last week with the first excuse, who am I? And now Moses' second excuse, who are you? God says, I already dealt with the first one. Now I'm going to deal with the second one. And I'm going to tell you who I am. I issue a challenge to you this morning. If you want to know who he really is, stand to your feet right where you are. Lift your hands in the presence of God. Get them up high. Come on, let's do some surrendering this morning. Let, let, let's do some, let's go beyond the reasonable inquiry. Come on, let, let's move from the mundane into the majestic. Let's move from the simple uh, into the supernatural. Let's, let's move uh, from that which is common into that which is of the Creator. If you really want to know him, he will create times. He will create moments. He will call you out of the simple and the mundane and the routine while you're doing what Moses was doing, tending the sheep. He will call you out of that and he will call you up to a high mountain and begin to show you things you've never seen before. He'll deal with your exterior. Take off your sandals because this is holy ground. Throw your watch away because I'm step, calling you to step into a place of timeless eternity and reality. Step into a place. Where you'll know me like you've never known me before. Yes, I, I, I know you know me as your healer. I know you know me as your deliverer. I know you know me as your savior. I know you know me as your provider. I know you know me for those things and you praise me. And you, I know you, I, I've already got that. But I want you to understand my nature. I want you to get a revelation of my person. I want you to know me intimately, not just for what I can do for you. Because if you have that, you truly have everything you need. Then you can say like Abraham, you are my shield and my great reward. If you really want to know him greater, more powerfully, more intimately, then you know him right now. You want to move from reasonable reality into the supernatural revelation of his person. Lift your hands all over this room. Cry out and say, God, I want to know you more. I want to know who you really are. Like I've never known you before. God Almighty. God Almighty. God All-Powerful. God All-Glorious. God All-Majestic. God All-Holy. God altogether wise, I want to know you today, tonight, tomorrow, the day after that, greater than I know you right now, so I can do what you've called me to do. 
go where you call me to go for your glory for your honor reveal yourself to me let me know your name like I've never known it before by your spirit for your glory in the name of Jesus I'm asking my objection what then is out the window you told me I could know you and so it's my desire it is my passion it is my yearning it is my longing to know you as you really are for your glory in Jesus name amen and amen